Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is a scientific type reaction, I guess you could say, or well, it is. And the video is how ice ages happen, the Milankovitch cycles. This is something I think I'm just sort. Of, I'm sort of just reacting to this for my own sort of personal sort of knowledge, as I do with a lot of videos. But I hadn't, I didn't have any suggestions for this. I just sort of saw this pop up and actually thought, you know what? I don't really know how this works. I've never sort of looked into this. Again, I probably did it in science back what, two, three, four years ago when I was in school, but. Again, when I was in school, I didn't really enjoy learning it all that much, you could say. So I probably missed this kind of stuff where I wasn't listening. I was talking to my friend when this specific thing, subject was being taught. But now it sort of comes to it. And with YouTube, it's sort of, it's just a lot more enjoyable to learn and to see new things. And yeah, I just sort of saw this pop up and I thought I'd do it. But I don't know how this is going to go down. Hopefully you're going to enjoy this one. If you want more reactions like this, suggest in the comments what you want to see. And yeah, let's just get into it. Quick shout out to my Instagram, my Twitter links in the description for those. Same for Patreon, links are all there for those interested. But yeah, I have seven seconds in. Let's get this up. Let's just give us a watch. Over Earth's long history, there have been dramatic changes to our climate. The ice ages have come and gone. And what's surprising is that there's a strong pattern that explains why ice ages happen when they do. This is called the Milankovitch cycle. Named after Milutin Milankovic, his theory explains how the Earth's climate changes over hundreds of thousands of years. His theory is based on two key ideas. First, the Earth's climate is strongly affected by how much sunlight the northern latitudes receive during the summer. Second, this amount of sunlight varies based on changes in the Earth's orbit and rotation. That's so weird. Why are the northern latitudes so important? It's because of ice. When sunlight hits the ground, most of the energy is absorbed as heat. But if the ground is covered in ice, most of the light reflects away because ice is white. Okay. This creates a positive feedback loop. Ice forms when it's cold, but ice also reflects light, making it colder which forms more ice. Oh, it's just like so a... ice is really important for climate. Oh, wow. The northern and southern hemispheres both contain lots of ice. But there's more ice in the north because there's more land. Land has a lower heat capacity than water, which means that water doesn't change temperature as easily as land does. This is why coastal regions are generally more mild and why ice forms more easily on land. Just look at the difference between the northern and southern hemispheres. That's in the so south, there are ice caps that grow during its winter, but not nearly as much as they do in the north. During the winter, the That's land insane. above the Arctic Circle Ingrosso. is covered in darkness, experiencing twilight 24 hours a day. That's mental, bro. It's very cold, and lots of ice forms during the winter. And this is true no matter what's going on with Earth's orbit. The key variable here is how much ice melts during the summer. This depends on how much sunlight there is during the summer. Now you might think that this doesn't change, but it does. Milankovitch showed that over hundreds of thousands of years, the amount of summer sunlight can shift plus or minus 15%. This can bring ice ages. This can end ice ages. How can the amount of summer sunlight be changing? Well, first, the distance from the Earth to the Sun is changing. And second, the Earth's <coughs> tilt is changing. The Earth's axis is currently tilted at 23 and a half degrees. Okay. But this changes. Other objects influence the Earth gravitationally, nudging its tilt up and down. Every 41,000 years, it cycles up and down. When the Earth is more tilted, there's more sunlight during the summer. More summer sunlight means that more of our ice melts away. With less ice on the ground, less light is reflected away, giving us a warmer climate. Earth is unusual in that its tilt doesn't change very much. Earth has a very large moon, which stabilizes its tilt. Bro, Mars, this, is when I, this is when you truly realize how like, how like um crazy all this stuff's happened on earth like all these little um these little things have helped work out and helped us having having a livable sort of planet 
and it makes you also under, like realize and understand like in like without like with how big space is it's still the possibilities of an earth being just like this that can ha inhabit life and we'll have a moon that can sort of keep it in its sort of in the um the right sort of oh, forget the word but so it can basically face the sun um what's the f he's literally just been saying the word i can't say it but the gravitational pull not gravitational pull but just what he's just been saying and um, so like the, the axis is like a back up here i can't think of the word but it's just like all these little sort of aspects have helped led like lead us to having again an, a place that we can all actually live and all this stuff happens and it's just like if one of these things went wrong whether it be the the earth tilted more down or the moon like an asteroid hit the moon and it broke like anything like this and everything like could change it's just crazy all these little minute details have helped this all happen this all happen it's just mental it's absolutely nuts bro this isn't even what it's about this is about ice ages but this is just what these sorts of videos make me sort of think about has two tiny moons and so its tilt changes much more dramatically wait what was this moon which stabilizes its tilt mars has two tiny moons and so its tilt changes much more dramatically mm. The next effect is the distance from the Earth to the Sun. The Earth's orbit is not a circle, it's an ellipse. Every really? 4th of July, we celebrate Aphelion, the day that the Earth is furthest from the Sun. So why isn't the Earth really cold then? Because I swear there's, there's planets like in the solar system that are really cold. Maybe at this point we're colder than some of those planets. Why doesn't the Earth get that cold? Is it because... Like, what? Like, why? So are these summers usually colder or what? Like, I don't really understand this. Sun. Then in January, the Earth moves closest to the Sun. Now the planets Jupiter and Saturn both nudge the Earth, causing its orbit to shift slightly, becoming either more oval or more circular. This happens over a period of 100,000 years. What the fuck? This effect is wildly exaggerated in this diagram. It actually looks more like this you can barely even see that the distance to the sun is changing. Oh. But this subtle change has important consequences for our climate. Earth as a whole receives 6% more sunlight during January than it does in July. The seasons change because the North Pole sometimes tilts towards the sun and sometimes tilts away. Oh, man. The change in the distance to the sun this works against the change in the seasons. This moderates the seasons in the north, since the Earth is furthest away in July. But this was not always true. The Earth's axis is moving in a circle. It's spinning like a top. This is called precession. In fact, I made an entire video about this. And what this means is that 13,000 years ago, the tilt of the Earth was reversed. When the Earth was closest to the sun, it was summer in the north. The distance Wait, change what? didn't oppose the seasons. It amplified seasons, making them more extreme. Now, warmer summer means more melting. More melting means less reflection, which means the climate as a whole is warmer. The amount of summer sunlight is affected by three long-term cycles. One changes the tilt. One makes our orbit more circular or more oval. And one changes how the distance to the sun matches with the changing of the seasons. These three cycles powerfully impact our climate. Scientists have measured the history of our climate using ice cores. Now, Earth's climate is complicated. You can't just reduce it to a single input. But the Milankovitch cycles have played a key role in our climate for hundreds of thousands of years. Yeah, he calls it the same bit. For Check more astronomical videos, please click to subscribe. I'll tell you what, I'm going to watch another one in this video. You know what? I enjoyed this last one. This could be another interesting one. Let's just watch this one. This is a follow up. Where are we in the Milankovitch cycles? To my previous video about the Milankovitch cycles. I got a lot of questions about that video, and I'm going to try to answer them. So, where are we within the Milankovitch cycles? We're right here. Remember, there are three cycles. There's the tilt, east intensity, and the precession. First, let's look at tilt. 9,000 years ago, the Earth's tilt was very high. It's gradually been dropping since then, so that now we're in a medium level of tilt. 
A high tilt predicts a warm climate. A medium tilt predicts a medium climate. Next, eccentricity. Currently, our eccentricity is low. This means that the Earth's orbit is almost a circle. Now we combine the eccentricity with the precession of the axis to figure out how far away the sun is during the northern summers. 9,000 years ago, the Earth was close to the sun in the summer, but now it's far away. So we had been in a warm period, and now we're in a cold period. Oh, wow. Now let's look at this over a shorter period of time. What's been going on the last 50 years? If we zoom in, we see that nothing has happened. The Milankiewicz cycles are very slow, and nothing has changed within 50 years. Putting everything together, what do the Milankiewicz cycles predict about us? They would predict that over the past 9,000 years, the Earth should have been gradually getting colder. And today, we should be in a mild ice age. Oh my days. Wait, what's going on? Why is it so hot? Wait, what? We should be in the... Did anything else happen in the last 9,000 years? To understand what, what happened, we need to talk about plants. Plants are made from carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Hydrogen and oxygen come from water, and the carbon comes from the air. When you cut down a forest, the wood rots away, and the carbon goes back into the air. 10,000 years ago, we invented farming. And this was a big hit. Everyone started doing it. To make way for farms, we chopped down the trees. The carbon in the trees went into the air, raising CO2 levels. The Chinese invented rice farming. Rice farming produces methane, which is a greenhouse gas. In summary, farming produced lots of CO2 and methane. The Milankiewicz cycles repeat themselves. We've seen many other warm interglacial periods before, and we can compare the warm periods from previous cycles. This graph shows us how CO2 levels have changed over the last 10,000 years. Oh, damn. Look at the rise. Let's compare this to how CO2 levels changed during the previous seven interglacial periods. This shows us the average change. What we see is that this time, CO2 levels rose higher than normal because this time we cleared forests to make way for farms. And if we look at methane, we see a similar pattern. So we stopped. We um, literally stopped. Having like, um, I forgot what I was gonna say, like an ice age, right? Because we're at the cold period. Like this is nuts. So the reason we're not in a mild ice age right now is because farming produced enough greenhouse gases to keep the planet warm. That's mental, But the bro. story doesn't end there. Farming is old technology. We were just getting going. We've added a lot more CO2 since then, and we've been doing it a lot faster. The Industrial Revolution gave us the modern world. It brought up living standards across the globe. And this led to riches that had never been seen before. But it also released a lot of CO2. CO2 levels are rising quickly, and global temperature is too. The recent changes to our climate have nothing to do with the Milankiewicz cycles. They have to do with greenhouse gases. God For damn. more astronomical videos... I'm liking this channel, man. I mean, this is the first time I've ever checked that out, but if you haven't already checked this channel out, it's quite interesting how it shows this kind of stuff. Over. But let's look back at this one. The Liz Mam trick you, we all know the damn squirrel has something to do with it. I say just happen when a squirrel tries to protect its nuts. When I was in elementary school in the 70s, we were told there would be an ice age by the time we became adults. Really? It's kind of wild. That would have scared the hell out of me if I was young like that. I can't wait to wish everyone a happy opinion on July 4th. Uh, world in ice age. Russia, just another day at the office. Milankovic is very underrated. His calendar is a more accurate one. But yeah. Um... I love learning something new every day. That's me, bro. That's one of the best presentations I've seen on this topic. Just plain and easy to understand info. Thanks. Yeah, it's a good video. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on this. Do you know more about this than maybe that you can maybe teach me or in the comments or whatever? 
I don't know, but this is another really good video, and hopefully you did enjoy this one. Like I said, if you want to see more stuff like this, let me know in the comments and suggest some more similar content styles. And yeah, until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.